Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about legacy. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, there is so much legacy at my place of work and I can never get the time from my stakeholders to fix it. What should I do? I'm starting to feel demotivated. Well, I would say that you can either try to push and fight or you can switch projects that's usually the two options that you have on your table uh, but I also think that you should ask yourself if there's something to learn about yourself in all of this so something that I've said before uh, is that I argue that the problem with developer happiness and keeping people engaged is that each of us is going to feel differently depending on the situation we find ourselves in. Some people are motivated by the social interactions in the group, like uh, they, they want to collaborate a lot and they feel really engaged by the co-workers around them. Some people feel very motivated by really, really hard problems that are super, super complicated. Some people are motivated uh, by business and seeing that they, they feel like they're bringing a lot of value and making a difference. We are all different when it comes to what motivates us and the thing is that no sustainable company can can accommodate all the needs of every single person there has to be a compromise somewhere the company has to decide okay where are our uh, where is the breaking point for what we can allow our developers and not, I mean not just developers and engineers and so forth but anybody in the company basically where where are we setting the boundaries and then there's a bit of a tug of war okay so this is where we set the boundaries and then we can only ha really hire people who are willing to work within those boundaries until we might change them of course that can also happen but that's basically what you're dealing with and what I'm here to tell you is that every single company that you work for will have legacy and every single company that you work for will have a time prioritization regardless of if you're at the really really big company or if you're at the really really small company because you can't f do everything at, uh, equally that's not possible you have to pick your you know, pick your pri uh, priorities so what I would suggest to you is to take a look at smaller projects because the thing is you know that it is inevitable for you to have legacy code and if you never get the time to fix it it might be because you're actually trying to fix problems that are too costly from the perspective of the company to fix and this is where I'm saying that the only other option you have here apart from moving from the project is to go in with the right mindset to f facilitate that change and very few developers who get demotivated by resistance will be able to push through, push through and actually make this happen so and this is why you usually have architects and uh, like tech leads and so forth because uh, if you want to make a significant change in a really really large code uh, large code base you're going to have to start a migration because usually you have so much code and so many stakeholders that the investment that you have to make at a personal level is absolutely enormous it can take i mean for a really large organization i mean uh, here uh, the uh, the the change that they're making in the automotive industry and these days i mean i think they've planned uh, last time I checked, they're still doing it i think that they re are rewriting a few of their old systems into java uh and I think the plan is to get that done in 10 years. 10 years! That's their plan. And so you can imagine as you that if you have the expectation or like the, your motivation goes down, if you can't like just, oh yeah, sure, we should stop everything else we're doing and just rewrite this whole thing immediately. If you can't make that happen and you feel demotivated by that, I think that it is because you're setting your expectations incorrectly. You, you have an an idealist view and then reality hits you and reality is that very few companies can afford to stop like what they're doing in order to just do this thing that you feel very strongly about so in order for you to make that happen you have to figure out either a like a 
you have to create budgets like time budgets for improvements and you might be have to be very patient and you might, might have to work for a long time and very very few developers have the energy or the desire to do this what they want is to be able to say at practically any moment I think this is ugly code I should be able to rewrite it because I feel that way and there is not a single human being under the sun that doesn't feel that way instant gratification isn't that what we're all about that's the best thing ever you have an idea you have a need and then you can just immediately fix it it's like having an itch and you can immediately scratch it uh, very few people on the other hand uh, are willing to put in the work if you put a little bit of resistance in front of them because then they kind of just sit down and either give up or go yeah no this actually isn't as important I like to say that if you want to check whether or not whether or not somebody has uh, real principles, put a gun to their knee and say, "Do you still feel this way?" It's very much the same thing. If you, it's very very easy to feel something or to have strong opinions or desires uh, when it doesn't cost you anything. But when it actually costs you something, the vast majority of people will give up. And so what I suggest to you is to, to ask yourself, uh, do a little bit of personal reflection and ask, what is it like? Uh, what is it that I'm actually after? What is it that I actually want? Okay, so you already know that legacy is a part of every system. So if that's a really bother for you, then the only project that you can pretty much be part of are either really, really small projects or very, very high quality projects where I would even go as far to say, I think the only projects that you might be able to find like the lowest levels of legacy would be the most modern projects in like open source maybe probably so with that insight then the next thing is that you, if you clearly need to feel motivated well then you have to ask yourself what is it that motivates you I think that one thing that seems to at least from what I can see is that maybe you should ask yourself at what stage of a project do you want to work? Because the thing is that th this is a reoccurring pattern I see very often and that is that a fresh new developer or like a mid-level developer who's really enthusiastic and wants to do all these cool things that they've been hearing about in uh, on tech talks and stuff like that and all this experimentation and innovation that you keep on hearing about uh, they go and work for say a really large corporation or like a really large uh, whatever right and they get demotivated because these companies, they don't do that. But the thing is, guys, uh, it, the problem isn't the company necessarily. Sure, like they, they, and they, I mean, they are most likely aware of all these trends and probably they're trying to move in that direction, but they're a slow moving organization. It will take them a lot of time to make this sort of shift because they have so many people and so many uh, features and like systems and so forth that it takes a while for them to get there. They might be working on it, but maybe too slow for you. So maybe the problem isn't that um, pro the problem is that you're in the wrong company. You're involved in the wrong stage. If you want to be the sort of person who has like tons of ideas and you can like in an afternoon just rewrite the system or like do whatever you want, maybe you need to be involved in the earliest stages of the system, and that's going to be in the startup world where you might be working with maybe a few a handful of developers on this little toy project with maybe a few thousand lines of code at most that you can be literally like because the scope of the system is so small that it really is possible for you to fix all the legacy in an afternoon or like in a few days and may and they will most likely might let you because that's the, the, because where they are right now all of these things are feasible but I will warn you and I will say that if, if your system takes off and becomes a success it's very likely because remember that big corporation that was so boring to work in because everything was so it was so hard to get things to get things uh, done well if your company meets success you're going to face a lot of the same problems and then of course if you're doing things correctly you will learn from these big giants that we have today and see what did they do right and what did they do wrong and then you will apply it yourself and then you will have an upstart programmer who goes into your company and says oh this is such a shit company and there are so many problems and so forth and so forth and then they will go and, re and repeat the cycle so what I want you to take away from this is that if you feel that you're dealing with a lot of legacy and a lot of issues and you feel as if you get demotivated um, at work 
maybe you should start asking yourself if the problem is that the company is really conservative or like the environment that you're finding yourself in is the is an issue and really ask yourself maybe you have learned you learn you have learned something about yourself maybe the problem is that you have a mismatch uh, between what you uh, at what point in the life cycle of a system you want to be involved there are people who will are like workhorses they they really just want to pay like to get paid to do something and like basically just be told what to do they're perfect in a really large corporation well we can discuss perfect but that's an environment where they feel very very secure because they know that there are a lot of benefits in working in these really low slow moving large organizations even for a junior developer this can be a very good environment because you get a lot of time to think and practice and so forth because things take time however if you're not that sort of person and you're really stressed and like you're it's a mismatch it's like you, you're trying to synchronize a really really fast fast engine with a really slow one and if you're a really fast engine you want to do things all the time and you're in a company where like everything is moving kind of like a, at a snail space that's the problem now you need to think okay maybe i should just skip the higher salary and like the all the other th things that are good about such an environment and go to a startup or a code base where it's much much earlier in the life cycle of that company and then i can be involved and like just uh, move as fast as they are because usually at the smaller scale you move much faster because you can and because you have to but don't forget your company is going to st uh, is going to uh, uh, at that small scale start out as a small company and start growing and you're going to face the same sort of challenges so it's really up to you to decide at what stage do i want to be involved in the software development cycle or the lifespan of a company and try to find a company that is at that point have a great day